Hello, my friends. Good morning. We're here at Valdemir, which literally I'm pulling out my um, high school German for th that one. It sounded familiar. It's literally Valdemir, which is uh, woods by the sea, which I thought that was fun. And this is a pretty old park. I think it was like turn of the century, um, 19th century, so 1896, and a trolley park. So that means like most of the trolley parks, this was added at the end as like a picnic grove and then attractions started being added little by little and then it eventually evolves into what you see here. And behind me is the Wacky Shack, which is one of the dark rides that I'm hoping to check out today. I think there's maybe one or two other ones worth checking out. They recently added an SBS spinner, which you know I've been on a lot of those. But the main event here is Ravine Flyer 2. I've heard a lot about that coaster and I cannot wait to ride it. So I invite you to come along. Let's check this out. So the coaster is about to open. All the rides open at noon. So in the meantime, let's learn some fun facts about the Ravine Flyer 2 here. Let's see, 3,061 feet of track, three giant drops, 60 degree first drop, extreme track banking. I did see that, that was crazy. Uh, 60 miles per hour, 10 spots of airtime. oh man. Wood track with steel structure, beautiful views of Lake Erie. Six tunnels, wow. All right, the line has officially opened. Here we go, Ravine Flyer 2. All clear. Please keep your own select inside the call time, so enjoy the first ride of the day on the Ravine Flyer 2. All right, first things first, the view from that lift hill when you're reaching the top is incredible. Lake Erie, I didn't realize just, I couldn't wrap my mind around how big it was, but wow. Um, great ride, the layout, so many tunnels. When they said there was what, six to 10 tunnels? I forget the exact number, but there's a lot of tunnels. And they use them well. They use the terrain well. We went over the road at some point. I was like, what is happening? There was so much happening. I I really liked it. I'm surprised it's not rated higher. Maybe it's because of the location and not that many people can get to it. Incredible layout. The PTC trains were great. I was in the third to last row. So much airtime. A little bit of ejector here and there. Some sustained airtime. Wow. What an incredible ride. What a great way to start the day. Now here's something else that happened. When I was putting my stuff in the bins that are at the station, yes, there's bins at the station. You don't have to put your stuff in a locker. I got myself real good with a uh, nail that was hanging from the bottom of one of the bins. <laughs> wow, this is awesome. It looks, look at this water interactivity here. Incredible stuff. This is probably the fanciest kitty coaster I've ever seen. Let's hop on. So Ravine Flyer 3, that was actually really cute. I like that they t took the name for the kids' coasters and upped one. Now where's Ravine Flyer 4? Is that coming? Is that on the horizon, I wonder? Uh, just behind me, just to point out, there's a bunch of these kitty rides here. It's really cool. And then, just to give you an idea of the lay of the land here, that is Ravine Flyer 2. And in that nook, there's like swings and a whole bunch of other stuff that um, kind of just dead ends there. You can't really get too many good views of Ravine Flyer 2 because it's interacting with the, uh, with the woods and all that terrain over there. So a lot of fun, but you don't get a really good look at it, I'd say. Huh, I haven't seen one of these flat rides in a long time. You guys remember these, these spider slash octopuses? But it is right next to the Wacky Shack, and I think I'm going to take a little break from the sun here and check out this award-winning dark ride. So that was a fun little dark ride. I did like a lot of the optical illusions, but some of the props that they had in there were freaky. But anyway, Pirate's Cove. It's just across the way here, and that's a walkthrough rather than like a traditional ride uh, like that one on rails. So I'm gonna go check that one out, and then we'll resume with the roller coasters. So from what I could tell, this one opened a little more recently, and I think by recently I mean the 50s versus the 20s for the Wacky Shack. Uh, I think each one has gone through different iterations, but I'm curious to see what the walkthrough 
is like. I've never done something like this. So I'm currently looking for maybe more views of Ravine Flyer 2, but I'm doubtful right now. But Pirate's Cove, wow, that was like a full, fully sensory, full sensory, I don't know what phrase it, it was, there was a lot going on, and it was, uh, I would say a little bit better than the Wacky Shack, because you had to walk through and there was more going on, um, less of those, like, kind of pop-up scares, if you know what I mean, rather than, like, here's a loud sound and something spooky, um, I reserved that for, like, Halloween Horror Nights versus that. I was kind of expecting there to be some sort of jump scare in that one, but thankfully there wasn't. But as I explore here, the next on the agenda is the, is it called Steel Dragon? Thank goodness I got the name right. But this one might look familiar to those of you who have been following along. This is a more spinning coaster, just like Laugh Track, just like the one over at Seabreeze. I think that was Whirlwind. We're going to give it a go. We'll be right back. wonder if they can kind of tweak or tune how much spinning these each vehicle is allowed to do because it felt like that one was spinning way more than whirlwind like way more that was actually like intense it was fun also one thing I did differently is that I did not go up, facing up the lift hill but instead I was facing downwards and back maybe that modified the experience as well I have no idea but I really enjoyed that one. That might be my favorite more spinner that I have ridden. So I really did want to go on the log flume that they have here, but I've been told that you need to pack an extra set of clothes if you come here because they sell water bombs. And I don't know what exactly that means, but I'm going to go find out. So I was very much mistaken. That is a tiny itty bitty log flume called Lil Thunder. This here is the real one, the big boy. <laughs> Something I have not mentioned yet is the park entrance. Parking is free. Park entrance is free. Wristband for all the rides or pay per ride with a Wally card, which unfortunately I haven't seen the mascot Wally Bear or Wendy Bear anywhere. Unfortunately, I don't think they're meeting and greeting. That would have been something though. <laughs> so it looks like the water bombs are coin operated. And so you just punish people as soon as they get off the drop. They don't look like they were getting too wet, but there's three stations for these bombs and I guess that just catapults water on them. I'm not sure. It looks like he's about to try it. Well, he's trying to with multiple ones. Let's see. Sounds like I'd be playing with fire or playing with water if I went on the ride because somebody could hit me with one of those water bombs. So, nope, not this time. Maybe next time. So this park does have its own whirlwind and it is an SBF Visa, SBF figure eight. Don't remember the model. I know I've seen it a lot. We're gonna get this one done and then I think Comet is the only one left. While in the queue, I noticed that they had a ride very similar to 1001 Nacht over at Knobles. This one they call it Alibaba. I wonder why this same ride has a very similar Arabian Nights type of theme, but nobody tell that lady that fell in love with 1001 Nacht because she might find her way out here. Upon further inspection, it's probably because of the magic carpet type of angle that they're playing here, but surely this comes in different varieties or flavors. getting done with whirlwind another whirlwind in the books surprises me that this was a choice they something that's decided to add to the park this year because the throughput is just miserable it works at stuff like I play America and some of the other smaller parks but the op ride operator who's working alone mind you has to unlock each one and straighten out the train basically depending on how it's fun that's got to be rough for throughput I'm surprised to see it here but 
One thing I did notice while I was riding it is there's a bit of landscaping right in the middle of the figure eight, which I thought was pretty cool. It's something that I haven't seen before. And that also made me notice that there's a giant water feature in front of that Alibaba ride. Pretty cool, huh? So coming from this direction, I felt like I had to kind of highlight a little bit of the midway that they have here. It is extensive. There's a multitude of games just to the left and the right, and unfortunately I haven't seen a mascot in sight. Another thing I've noticed is that there's statues like this all over the place. I'm not sure why, but I think it adds a really nice touch. And speaking of the landscaping, look how amazing, just for this simple little ride. They have like a water feature in the middle, it's kind of hidden right there. I'll put another shot in right now, but hmm. That is the nicest one of these types of rides that I've ever seen. Currently drowning my sorrows with some pepperoni balls because unfortunately it seems like Wally and Wendy are not performing this season and they didn't make any appearances last season and womp womp. No mascots to meet today. So those pepperoni balls were good. They were like mini calzones basically. And now we're on our way to our last stop here, Comet, which is like a 50s era wooden coaster. Looks pretty cool. And then that's going to be all the coasters. Five hot and fresh credits today. And the station has a really cool vibe. I don't know why circular stations kind of fell out of fashion. bit of a battle to it but it was a fun little layout I dig it you can feel the uh, the age in it like just in the stylings the height is dropping some of the the layout basically gives you a lot of hints of what era it came from not a bad ride and then right behind me or right in front of me rather is the carousel which I don't know too much about I don't see like a Wurlitzer or a pipe organ or anything like that but it is really pretty let's take a look so I cannot tell if these are carved or not I am no carousel expert but when it comes to lights I think they did a pretty great job don't you think so I looked it up and it's a chance carousel apparently they sold or auctioned off the original for like a million dollars back in the 80s didn't know that well anyway guys Unfortunately, I have an appointment to go get a tetanus shot, so I'm not going to be doing the sky ride like I wanted to. But hopefully, we will be back someday in the future. Hopefully, Wally will be doing meet and greets by then, and hopefully, there will be a plush of him that I can pick up. But to summarize the day, Ravine Flyer 2 was amazing. Highly enjoyed the more spinner that they have here, the Steel Dragon. Comet was a charming little guy. And I want to thank Steve and everybody who took care of that screw that I ended up scratching myself on so quickly. They, like, did it immediately, which is impressive, and that's how you handle stuff like that. So, thank you guys so much for watching. I'll see you next time. I hope you go make your own adventure. Bye.